Uh. I wanna celebrate this life forever. Come on. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, how y'all doing out there? What's going on, everybody? Good welcome, evening. Welcome, welcome back to... Hi, Sudan. Hey, Tiff. <laughs> how you? I'm great. How you doing? I'm good. Okay, okay. Well, welcome back to Revolution Ready. Yes, yes, yes. Another episode. Um, here we are again with a very special guest. We have the father of Jay Anderson. Jay Anderson Sr. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Salute. Thank you, Sedan, Tiffany. Nice to have you on the show today. Y'all make sure y'all, y'all like and share uh, Revolution Ready today because we're going to have a great conversation with Mr. Anderson Sr. Thankful for him being able to spare some time um, and to share the story and just to talk to us a little bit uh, about the Anderson family um, and what has been going on, but most importantly, tell us, you know, about Jay Anderson Jr. Okay. Uh, talk to us about who he was, because I think it's good to be able to just to hear the humanistic version of Jay, because you you all knew him better than we did. Oh yeah. Um, and so it's good to be able just to hear fun funny stories, moments that y'all shared, uh, his laughter, even you know you have a granddaughter. Uh, yeah. Out of out, out of that came out of this, um, and so it's good to hear all of that. Oh, yeah. So welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for having me. It's been a hard five years. My son was a respectful young man. He loved his family. Jay Jr. attended all the family events. He was a hard worker. He worked with me and my business, and he also was employed at Ruby Tuesdays as a cook. He graduated from high school and was talking about moving to Texas. Jay Jr. was so in love with his daughter. He left such an impression on her that she remembered everything about him. She was a year old when he was murdered. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's, yeah. And Joseph Mensa not only ruined our lives, he took sons from two other families. So Yeah. Yeah, Jay was a, Jay was a, that was my, <laughs> that was my boy. That, yeah. I mean, I got two. I got three kids. I got a daughter, Natasha, and I got a mm-hmm. son, Trey. But mm-hmm. Jay Jr. was everything we did, we did together. Yeah, like, I, I run a uh, landscaping business, okay. so I'm doing snow and grass, and he was always there to help me <laughs> when I needed it. So. Right, right, right. And the, thing, the sad thing about that, when that happened five years ago, uh-huh. I had to still go to these jobs and, you know, survive. Mm-hmm. But it was so... Heartbreaking to everybody I went to, you know, all the contracts I had, they was coming to me crying and very hurt over this. Right, so, right. Yeah, Jay, he, that was that was my boy. So what? Tell us. Go back. Tell us what's the name of the uh, landscaping business? One. Uh, Jay's. I don't. I don't really got a name. I just word of mouth for me. I just didn't build it up to where I don't want to. I got enough right, clients, right. so you know, but. I, I just I don't got no specific names, just Jay. They, well, we can keep building on that business, oh, so that yeah. way you can continue yeah, we all can. services. Yeah, that way I can get some young people to help me. So yeah, you know I can get young people to come out and help. You know? I'll help you, Pop. Oh, you yeah. know that exactly. That ain't no problem. You get paid, though. Now, you know how you do. I'll help you. I don't do a lot of manual <laughs> labor, but I'm right. be honest. But I could definitely uh, make sure that you uh, make sure that we can connect you to some folks, and especially right. when you need. Is in the spring coming to get get the lawn looking nice oh, yeah. and everything like that. But uh, so continue telling us more about you know just your relationship and how Jay was. Um. Jay was a he was a, he he uh, Jay was like his dad. Like my dad, my dad always been in my life all my life. Yeah, even since I was a baby. So mm-hmm. that's 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 how I go with my family. Mm-hmm. You know, he was just uh, from baby on. Mm-hmm. 
that I don't want to say <laughs> my other son, like he was special to my other son, but Jay was a little older and he was just, Jay was just, he was everything, like mm-hmm. to play and joke. And, mm-hmm. you know, I remember the night before he passed, we all sat down, we ordered cousins. I was complaining about garbage bags and him and his mom, they drove to Walmart to get some. Uh-huh. And that day he was like, mom, I love you. And, you know, yeah. he, she was like, I love you too, son. I, want not, I don't want nothing to ever happen to you. And, right. And so we sat there, me, Jalen, and her, we sat there, Jalen, she walked around biting off everybody's sub and, mm-hmm. you know, and I got tired about 10 o'clock or 1030, so... I called it a night, so mm-hmm. that was the last time I saw my son. We ate subs together mm-hmm. with my granddaughter and my wife. Mm-hmm. That's what I did with Jay. But Jay, he was a cook at uh he was a cook at Ruby Tuesday, mm-hmm. so Jay liked he liked to make money. <laughs> he liked, he <laughs> That's liked always a good money. thing. What's some of the things that like maybe he had favorite that he could cook well? Yeah, he, uh basically a lot of things. We would Steak, he could cook and barbecue. He was a cook at Ruby too. So he can cook just to use a weed, chicken and ribs. What mm-hmm. about you? You you good at cooking? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I, I'm good at cooking. Yeah. Very good at cooking. Uh-oh. Might be able to uh, carry his legacy on, you know, oh, uh, yeah. start a, a cooking business. You know, yeah. start selling some dinners in honor of Jay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we we do me and my wife, she was cause at the moment, you know, we we trying to pay Kim, so she sells lasagna and beads, so we've been doing that. So Okay. And she also has a little jewelry collection going on because Yeah, the beads. The beads, y'all can't see uh, it. I wanna get my beads. I feel uh, like yep. Bro go. bro over here, you gotta get you oh, gotta yeah. get on the beads. So get my beads. Mama Anderson has been making uh bracelets. I have three on. Um, she has a Justice, the Queen, and well, everybody can't have that one. But <laughs> <laughs> and the BLM was chance for Black Lives Matter. Uh, so make sure that y'all. I got the support. King one. Look at. Oh yeah, we, go. you got the we gotta get you on, bro. Yeah. She she yeah. do whatever you want. If you want your name on there or whatever you want on there, she'll spell it out and she, that's how she makes it. So let's baby. make sure we post that information on the page and y'all continue to support the Anderson family. And if you haven't, you know, this is one way that you can support. That's you right. Know, they got the beads, they got the plates. You know, and Jay does lawn care services, too. And snow. And, and snow. I need some help because I'm getting old, y'all. So <laughs> so welcome, everybody. Revolution Ready. We just getting into it, talking to Mr. Jay Anderson Sr., father of Jay Anderson Jr. If you're not familiar, um, over this past summer, uh, the People's Revolution, shout out to TPR, um, and most definitely the the... Justice for the three, the three families. Uh, so that means uh, Alvin Cole, Jay Anderson Jr., and Antonio Gonzalez, um, who were all brutally killed um, by a former Wauwatosa police officer, Joseph Mensa, who is now serving as a uh, Wa- Waukesha County Sheriff. Um, it's just, it's, it's even heartbreaking to even say that he has continued on as a police officer, um, knowing the fact that he he killed not just one, not two, but three um, individuals in our community. And so we wanted to make sure that we had respect for Mr. Anderson and Mrs. Anderson, who wasn't able to be here today, um, to have them come on the podcast and just talk to us about who Jay is and talk to us about, um, you know, what their journey has been throughout this whole time and then where we are right now because i think it's important for the people to get an update um and speak on the uh the john doe case as well that uh kim Motley is working on okay yeah that's that's going really good we come uh may 4th is going to be the day uh that's going to be the last day of the john doe so the, the judge have to he's gonna he's not gonna give the decision that day but 30 days later he's gonna you know, give us the decision then. So tell us what, for so people who don't know, tell us what the what the John Doe hearing, what that means, like what's the, happening. The John Doe is uh, basically when uh, when my lawyer, Kim, she was trying to just say the guy was guilty and he did a lot of things wrong and, mm-hmm. you know, had a lot of evidence saying what she, you know, saying he should be charged with murder. Right, right. And John Chisholm is just, he's ignoring her. He, he just letting this man get out there. Mm-hmm. And so we just, the ladies, I mean, the young lady is good because she, I didn't know nothing about a John Shout Doe. out Kim. Yeah, that's right. Shout, and, out, and, and, Shout and, out to and, Kim. And, you know, it's very hard to get a John Doe going. I think Corey Stingley dad got one going also. Mm-hmm. But 
it was just amazing for us to get that John Doe going and and have all these specialists and ex officers and detectives testify. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, just in our favor, saying that it's really it's second degree murder is what he did. Let's speak on that. Like, uh, just add a little detail to it. Like, uh, what are some of the things that you feel to come in conflict with when it comes to what the police did as far as their investigation? Like, what is some of the things you want to say? Like, you know, they had no business doing. Just as well as Kim is saying. Every, they had no business doing. Baby J, my, I'm, excuse me, Baby J, I call him Baby J. That's what I call him, Baby J. Oh, yeah. Baby J should have went home with a a ticket. Mm-hmm. Right. He had a gun. He ain't no felon. What? It's open carry state. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the way Joseph pulled up on my son mm-hmm. with your floodlights on. And, and you know, we, he had the floodlights on. And, and the only thing we got is just 28 seconds. And couldn't hear nothing. Don't know what's happening. Mm-hmm. And, and 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 next thing I know, my son is getting his head blew off mm-hmm. by him. You know, he shot him three times in the head and one in the, in the, in the, uh-huh. in the shoulder. He shot six times though, mm. and he said my son was lounging for a gun, which he wasn't. Right. My, my son was inebriated. See, with my son, he was twenty five. Uh huh. Any twenty five year old gonna go out and kick it, you know? Right, we all kick it. Yeah. I kick and it. 38? I always told my son, mm-hmm. man, you get too lit, or you get, man, pull over pull and over. go sleep, man. That's don't, right. don't kill nobody. Yeah. But that day, he pulled in Madison Park in a dark park, and Joseph ended his life. Mm. He was inebriated, and uh, the way he Joseph was saying things like, you know, my son was asleep. He saw us. Heart beating fast. He mm-hmm. walked around the car. First, he walked around the car. He did all that. The only reason he saw my the gun on the seat is because I really found out later, you know, with Kim, that only reason he found that out because my son was glancing over. Mm-hmm. He was glancing at the gun over on the seat. But let y'all let it be known, my son had a gun on the seat, but they're not saying that the clip was on the back floor back there. So yeah, it's so many things they did, and then. After I saw my hand, my son, you know, get murdered like that, mm-hmm. you know, I saw him. I was wondering. We couldn't. We don't know what was said or what was done. All, all we know is Joseph clicked the thing on just to get that ending of that twenty eight seconds. Yeah. And uh, only thing I saw is the third time. No, the first time I saw him, he was inebriated. He came down. He stopped. Mm-hmm. He was pushing up with his mm-hmm. on the dashboard with this hand. This hand was up. Mm-hmm. Second time, this is the one that I, the video I saw. He 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 did it again, but mm-hmm. this time we Saffron stopped the tape. D. A. Chisholm was there, and we like he's not going for a gun. Right. The third time I saw this, Joseph just let loose on my son from the passenger side of the of the car, and I really just saw my son head go out the window. I really saw his brains and all that fly out the window. You know, oh as, it's, it's heartbreaking, but that's what he did. And on top of that, they let my son sit there for seven minutes before this other officer come up. Seven minutes? Seven minutes. He sat up there for seven minutes before they got up to the car. And um, the other two guys, the other two guys was walking up with their guns out. Joseph was behind them two guys, you know, looking and looking. And, you know, when they opened the door, Joseph walked back. Mm-hmm. And then I saw the other cops. He pulled a gun out the uh, seat. Clicking it back, handprints, all that. Everything they did was wrong. And then they put my son in the ambulance. I, I heard for an hour. And then when he got to the hospital, that's when they tried to, you know, he died at the hospital, but he was in that, that ambulance for an hour, I think, mm-hmm. on the in Madison Park. That's wow. just crazy, man. And, and, and it's just so many things they did wrong. So many things they did wrong. So, so you know, you've been going through... Uh, I think this is will be like the third hearing date. Yes. Um, and talk to us about, you know, a lot of the time and effort that not only Kim, but you all have put into trying to just get this information out there. Um, because at the time when this, when it happened, you know, there were no charges that were filed. It was even information that you guys didn't even know. Yes. Um, So just talk to us about how it is, you know, the experience has been now a lot of this stuff has been uncovered. Mm -hmm. Things that you already probably was thinking or uh, should have been known or, you know, already thinking yourself. So talk to us about how this this experience has been. 
this experience has been to where, to me and my wife, it just seemed like it's starting from the top with Chisholm and Chief Weber. I mean, all these lies and corruption that's going on. They know it's going on. Mm-hmm. Like Joseph, what is it called? PSTD? What is that? Mm-hmm. PTSD. PTSD. Yeah, PTSD. that's what he has. Mm-hmm. And they know this guy has it and he takes medicine for it. Mm-hmm. But they're constantly letting this man out here to go murder people. And this is what D.A. Chisholm, Kent Laverne, Chief Weber, all these people know this man got a problem, y'all. And mm-hmm. they keep putting him back out there. That's a big problem. Right. I don't know who got his back or who with him is, you know, but they keep putting this man on forces, on, on the force, the sheriff. They keep covering up for this man. I don't know what's going on. I really don't. Yeah. But it's just, I'm just seeing more and more corruption and lying and just so much they didn't did wrong. It's, you know, mm-hmm. and they study trying to keep a lot of stuff away from us. Mm-hmm. You know, like Kim is, like I was saying earlier, they, uh, when they, uh, Chief Weber was in court, they supposed to gave the Joseph uh, dash cam, unredacted uh, papers. They mm-hmm. still haven't done it. Yeah. So we got to go in court on Friday and, and try to, you know, get them for contempt because that's what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Shout out Kim Ali, y'all. Yeah. Oh yeah. Straight up, she putting in a lot of hard work. She this case, work. Just, man, just hearing that stuff though, man, that's just it's just gruesome that he can just still, you know, carry a gun. You know, it, just, it doesn't make sense to me that he's allowed to still protect and serve, and that's not what he's doing. Exactly. He's out here murdering people, and he has a, a medical condition, a mental condition. You know, to where he has to have medical, you know what I'm saying, procedures going on with him. He has to take medicine. Oh, yes. This guy has to be, you know, oh, my God, this is just, it's crazy. It's crazy. It, it, it just don't make sense to me. It don't. And me and my wife said this five years ago. A lot of retired detectives, a lot of police back then was saying he was going to murder again. And mm-hmm. he did kill again. Mm-hmm. It was four years later, but he killed again. Mm-hmm. And me, he's back on the force. He's going to kill again. Honestly, you guys, he's going to kill again. And that's, 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 that's the problem. And the thing about it, he's not killing Caucasian and white people. He's just killing brown and black people. Yeah. His own kind. Exactly. That's what he's doing. So May 4th is the date. Yeah, for Chief Weber. To, uh, Chief Weber's going to have to testify. Joseph dun, dun, Knight, dun. he's gonna he's gonna he's gonna plead the fifth. If he got up there, he was gonna plead the fifth. So he's on. He don't have to be there. But Chief Weber's gonna be on the stand May fourth. So we need y'all there. <laughs> May fourth. Where, where is that? At? Uh, room six. I, I know it's on the sixth floor. Judge uh, Yumara. Oh, that's terrible. I don't know my judge name. Y'all can shoot yeah, me. I know his name. I'm trying to remember. Uh, <laughs> Uh, the pr- the pronunciation of it. Yeah, Yerahamo. Yep, that's it. That's it right, right. there, Yerahamo. It's Branch 34, uh, Milwaukee County Courthouse. Mm-hmm. And it's at 9 o'clock, right? Yep, 9. Okay. And are there other witnesses that will be testifying on that day? We're going to have that uh, ex- that expert from Washington, D.C. Okay. I think some more uh, retired detectives and police officers. Okay. And yeah. So I think um, you know, Pierre, you you've been out when we were like all of us have been out, you know, over the summer, uh, making sure that we brought awareness to to what was going on. Like, tell us what what was your thoughts on just the whole protest and bringing awareness about you know the officer involved, but more importantly, making sure that we kept the names of Alvin and Jay and Antonio alive. Um, honestly, uh. A lot of the people that I came across didn't even know some of these officers' names. You know, they just, they they heard bits and pieces. Right. You know what I mean? But they can never actually just put the whole story together. Mm-hmm. And once we did arrive and, and start sharing that knowledge with a lot of people, um, I think it actually opened up a lot of people's eyes really to these officers because they, I mean, I'm pretty sure they've, they've probably come across this guy you know what I mean? Once or twice, not even knowing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right, right. So I, I just feel like it's, it's it's scary right now that he's still out here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I, I drive to walk a show. You know what I mean? Like yeah. at, at any moment, that could be any, any one of us. You know what I mean? God and forbid. I feel like we just got to keep pushing awareness. We yeah. got to. We, we got to. to. And 
Once again, shout out Kim that's trying to make it happen. And, Most definitely. You know, shout out to Kim. Yeah. Expose all this corruption that's going on. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> Deja also, you guys. Deja been there. Now nah, we Deja oh, too. Shout Deja, out Deja as yes, well. Deja been there also. But the thing about that is when it came out, you know, you know guys, uh <clears throat> we was on a uh, we had the coals. We was me and my wife really thought this was a joke. Like somebody, the feds trying to mess with us or what's happening? They like this Joseph and the coals was trying to reach us and putting different pictures of a different black guy on wall with us. We was like, nah, this this can't be. Nah, yeah. this ain't real. But come to find, we got together and we finally got together and we came to the march on June and we got together and. It's been history since. Yeah, I was going to ask you, how did y'all get connected yeah. and, uh, to each me, other? Me and Linda said, you know what? I said, babe, I said, put his real picture out. I put the game. I said, no, this not, that's not Joseph. Y'all talking because that's why we thought it was a joke because they sent us the wrong picture. Yeah. But when we sent the real picture out and everything just clicked together. And it's that, that's amazing. Now, it ain't amazing how they hear that just like that, you guys. We didn't know. I remember a, a, a journalist calling me on that February 2nd. I'm like, uh, who is it? I said, is it Joseph that killed somebody else? He's like, I don't know. You know, but he had called me the second. I didn't know it was Joseph had did it. Mm. And the way I saw that, the way he ran up on that young kid and just killed that young man like that, that, that that's that's just, we got a serial cop on our, a serial killer on our hands. Exactly. Here. The way he killed, I mean, <laughs> it's a problem. He got a big problem. And then how did you make the connection to even Mrs. Gonzalez? Um, uh, we all did that through you guys, P- TPR and uh, Kim, and we just met numbers. Okay. Kim wanted everybody number. And okay. when we met Miss Cole, that's mm-hmm. the first thing. She's like, Kim, won't y'all number? We like, no hesitation. You just go. And from there on, it's been popping. I don't mean to see <laughs> the, it like that. On. Yes, it's the been, fight is on. on. It's been on. And see, that's where we messed up. Well, we didn't mess up. When we when it first happened, we was marching. I mean, marching, marching. But what we didn't do is keep marching and keep going like TPR and everybody else been mm-hmm. doing for these last thirty three hundred and thirty um, six days. Seven, seven. I'm wrong. Okay, three hundred thirty seven. Yeah. You're right. And that, that <laughs> makes a big difference, you guys. Consistency. Made, okay. Yes. Mm-hmm. And, and before when we was marching and doing everything we was doing. We was getting a lot of fingers and FUs, and now you guys on oh, the real. Wow. Oh, yeah, when we first did this. Oh, yeah, now they know what we're about. Now, you guys, to see this, I'm marching in Wild Toast, and we're marching everywhere just to see <laughs> black people, white people come off their porch and start marching with us, and mm-hmm. you know, and just, you know, helping us out and just seeing the truth, yeah. you know. Another thing, I hate George Floyd and Breonna Taylor got killed. You know, that, that just brought all this. Cause they had swept my son and, their, and you know everything else under the rug, and it came out. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I hate that they, 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 you know, what I'm saying they passed like that, but it brought a lot of other things out, you guys. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Same mm-hmm. thing for Seville, yeah. uh, TPR. After uh, George Floyd got murdered, I mean, if it wasn't for TPR, we probably wouldn't be where we are right now. We, sure, we wouldn't be. You know. We keeping the be. march alive, keeping the names of the family alive, you know, keeping us in their prayers, keeping us in their actions, you know, mm-hmm. demanding justice for us on the days that we can't go out and fight. Oh, yeah. So I almost definitely know where you come from with that. Oh, yeah. My brother's case was uh, supposed to be, uh, supposed to have an appeal against the, uh, um, the wrongful death uh, and them actually uh, going through with the lawsuit. Okay. And then, you know, we was marching in the streets and... My name came up with TPR, and it was just like, no, nah, we don't want them in our office. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and that's crazy. You know, but it most definitely shout out TPR. And the thing I'm seeing, you guys, is when we tell the truth and the truth come out and, 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 and the pictures and all this come out, the truth is just they don't like it. No, yeah. not at they all. They don't like the truth. Mm-hmm. They hide it, and I just don't. <laughs> That's what. That's how I know they corrupt and just corrupt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and not only that, like just the not liking it, then it is the counter stories that come out mm-hmm. to try to discredit folks. Or, or, I mean, or the uh, the or fact the that they throw money. 
yeah. in your face. I think a lot of that has to do with, you know, they want to keep it quiet. They expect yeah. for it to go away. You know, they want to discredit the movement because they don't think that it's real. And they want people to have this perception about, you know, that black and brown people are just criminals or that they were deserving of it. Um, and that's far from the truth. So, you know, definitely shout out to yeah. all of the families who have gone through this and then most definitely to, um, you know, the protest groups and everybody who's just continued to just say no. Mm-hmm. Y'all going to be one of the many families. I believe it in my heart that y'all will be one of the many families that actually get justice. Not just in the form of where, you know, they give you some money. You know, they say it was wrongful death, but they throw the case out. I I believe that he's going to jail. You right. know, I believe that the people that are um, in accomplice with his actions are going to jail. Yeah, that's you know, because you know what? That money, my son is priceless. Ain't no money for him. Yeah. Ain't no mm-hmm. ain't man. No money priceless, y'all. Amen. Money ain't no thing. I want justice. That's, that's right. right. That man, Joseph Mensah, he crossed the line and he committed a crime. That's what he did. And that's he what we yeah. need to be in jail. Yeah. You pay exactly. for it. He really do. Man. Big ups to you. <laughs> thank, you thank you. Thank you. It's a hard fight to, uh, yeah. you know, to take head on. I lost my brother. You lost your son. Yeah. You know, um, it's two different point of views of, you know, just missing that person. Oh, yeah. You know. Mm-hmm. And that being your junior, you know, I got a junior, so I know that that's, you know, it's tough. Mm-hmm. You know, not that I know, but, I mean, I feel like, you know, it's yeah. most definitely not easy for you. It's not. This, 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 this feeling and pain, you guys, it'll never go away. Everybody is different. I don't know how everybody else. You know, we. I still have. I, I, every every we have my days. I can just yeah. mm-hmm. ride by somewhere like Madison Park. We had Father's Day up there and all that on the nineteenth. Who's up there before? Baby, they used to go there and just sit back and relax and right. unwind. Right. That's what he used right. to do. You know, but um. So it was a question that came through. Shout out to Sarah Smith. Uh, she asked a question about, like, what is um, one thing that you would like to leave as a legacy? Um, you know, obviously, Baby J, if you don't mind me calling him that. Um, you know, your granddaughter, a beautiful granddaughter that you have. Uh, but what's one thing that you want everybody to know and a legacy that could be left for, you know, Jay? I'm a, I'm going to try my best to make it a legacy. When I ride on 91st in Hampton and then I go around to Madison Park, I want that to be Jay Anderson Jr. Park. You know, that's what Respect. I want that to be, Jerry Jay. Mm-hmm. I, I know everybody always remember him like that park on 55th in Lisbon, DeMarcus. You know what that was about and you know what happened with mm-hmm. that kid. Mm-hmm. That's what I want, Jay Anderson Jr. Park. You know, Respect. That's what I Respect. Want. And we're going to go for it. Most definitely. I'm going to need y'all help to help me uh, go for it. <laughs> <laughs> have you already started looking into the process for what that looks like? I, I have. Okay. I have. I'm just waiting till all this, oh, this is over with, mm-hmm. you know. I'm waiting to this, see what the judge going to Because this is, we, we hoping and praying it go our way now, y'all. We don't know how this going to go, so. Oh, I'm already a, putting in the atmosphere mm-hmm. for right, it. Right, yeah. right. It's so much, it's so much work that's been done. Yes. Um, and I think. I was saying earlier, it's, it's a day of reckoning. Um, today, the news, I don't know if anybody saw, uh, those of you who are watching and tuning into to this, um, so if you remember the story of Ahmaud Arbery, who was doing what a lot of people do, not me, but they run uh, as a form of exercise. And he was going on a daily jog. And three, um, what I want to say, white supremacists, um, exactly. they... they Wanted to take the law into their own hands. And this young man is no longer here with us because they decided to do that. Um, they decided to go ahead and, and kill him. And so, you know, whether you were civilian, but most definitely if you're a police officer like Mensa, you know, not following the law, but then not following policy, right. you have to be held accountable for those things. And so today the federal government announced that they're going to um, announce, excuse me, they're going to charge those three men were a hate crime. Um, so that's one step in the right direction. Mm-hmm. So connecting that to, to, you know, baby J, you know, having a John Doe is a good step in the right direction. Um, so, you know, I just, I'm, we put it in an atmosphere for you. Yes. Well, I hope they get hit with hate, hate, hate crime and, and, and go to the fed John, for real. Y'all <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> Something need to be done to that officer because he's out of, he's a murderer. Okay. And he's still out here. And the thing about that, you guys, I mean, what is Waukesha County? Is that Menominee Falls? 
What else? West it's, Dallas. It's, I mean, when you go to jail, when Waukesha go to Waukesha jail, you, you call them freeways. There's Menominee Falls. It's Brookfield. Brookfield. It's uh, Waukesha. This yeah. man can be, he's around. Yeah. 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 And he's a sheriff now. His so. jurisdiction is large. Yes. So what type of conversations are you having with the 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 youth in your family is in regards to um, being out there, um, even with having the, the tragedy happen in your own family, how do you how do you talk to the, the young men and women in your family moving forward? Um, I, I, you have to tell them because, you know, you got to go, you got to really on a reel, you have to put your hands, you got to let them see your hands, you have to do everything they can see you, but when you do all, everything they tell you to do, and so you don't say Basically, when they pull up on you behind you, putting your hands on that steering wheel, turn your phone on because that, that's that everybody. If it wasn't for that phone, a lot of things wouldn't get get done yeah. now. You yep. know, Very phone true. is like a credit card now. For it really is. So, mm-hmm. but I just tell them be 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 be. You know, yes, sir. You know, do do the right thing. You know, but you got some cops that <laughs> that don't do the right thing. Yeah. But you got you got you got to follow the law and go by the rules and do what they say and let them you know what I'm saying don't be having your hands everywhere so they can see them and you know. Yeah, and that got to be hard because I know even us as black men, um, it it, it kind of takes it makes us feel like they're taken away from us. Oh, yeah. Um, to to have that conversation even when I talk to my nephews, I don't have a son, I have a daughter, but when I talk to my nephews, I even feel some type of way telling them they should have to act a certain way when they're around law enforcement. They should not do this or do this. Otherwise, it could result to either jail or your life. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So that, that makes me feel a certain way, even as a man before anything. Like, mm-hmm. Even though, yeah, I want to say, be a law-abiding citizen. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do the right thing. But mm-hmm. I don't ever want to take, take your innocence away from you but being who you are. Like, you, you can just get killed from being a black man driving. Right. You know what I mean? So I, I definitely... Uh, I don't even... I, like I said, I just I hate that feeling. Like I yeah. said, to have to tell somebody like, don't you can't act a certain way around this person because you might die. Yeah, you know what I mean? wow. Like, yeah. That conversation is deep. It's yeah, deep. it is. That's you know, I have to come to him like, cause you, you, y'all got to realize, baby Jay was in his car sleep in Madison Park. The man was yeah. in the car sleep, mm. and it was pitch dark. But they got lights out there now and all that. So, mm-hmm. but you really can't see the the sign when you're going in there park close at 10 tell me how many people really can see that little bitty sign when you're going in the park and another thing with that i think he should have called the sheriff because that's the milwaukee county park right that's a county thing mm-hmm. so, right you know he took matters into his own hand it wasn't even his jurisdiction he went, he went in there that night that day he said it was pitch black and that car was there with nobody around and, and me, I'm going to say, as a dad, he said, I got me one. Right. The way he killed my son, that's the way it looked. He said, I got me one. He did it just like that. He went there, he went there with intentions. He went intention to kill. Because yeah. you, whenever you going to pull up in, first of all, he pulled in with a, with a floodlight in front of him. That's a no-no. Mm-hmm. When you're supposed to pull in the back of somebody. And then you pull in the front of him. He put himself in there. If my son wanted to shoot, he wouldn't have had nowhere to go. He wouldn't mm-hmm. have had nowhere to go. You know, but he 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 flooded my son, and then he said my son was going for a gun. My son, my lunch for a gun. He wanted to kill my son at night. He did. The thing about it, I get it. When we go into court, he was like, Joseph saw these bullets hit my son. He saw. He, I yeah. saw the bullets yeah. hit your son. Yeah. You know. Did he call for any backup? Three minutes later, I mean, after he shot him. After he shot him, he's like, subject down. I, I, this was always be in my heart my mind. I'm seeing this young black man saying, subject down. I'm okay. Mm-hmm. And my son, with his head, brains blew out over the thing, laying there dead. Mm. And then after that, you guys, not only that, it's just when that happened, that man was walking around like nothing happened. Around the crime scene? I, I mean, Baby J lit, sitting in the car, head blowed off like this. Joseph walked around calmly, you guys. Like ain't no man and he ain't just blew no like man. Like his routine. Yeah. Just flat out. Just walking around like I ain't I ain't just shot this man in the head. You know, for seven minutes they did that till they went up to that car, the man was calm. Through the whole thing, really. <sighs> That's just yeah, that man was this, calm. I just have goosebumps even just hearing it's it's every, 
it's, uh, it's, I'm just as we talk. I'm just yeah. <laughs> constantly. And another thing he, we you know, I heard, I got to hear in court is where. At first, he was saying he couldn't turn his microphone; it wouldn't work. But on, you mean his body cam? His body, you know, the, you know, yeah, the body cam, with yeah, the, for the for the for the car, right? You know, with the red and blue mm-hmm. lights, you know. But he said, "I did it so they can see." This this is Detective Day. I heard this in court not too long ago. Mm-hmm. I I turned it on. At first, he was saying he couldn't get it on, but mm-hmm. then on 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 they got him on recording him. He said. I turned it on so y'all can see me do this. I mean, that's what he said. I turned it on so you can see. So we could see. At first, he was having a problem getting on, but when he wanted to see, bloop, it went mm-hmm. on easily. So then I think that's intent. Pierre, yeah, that's yeah. intent. Yeah. yeah. Like, that's most definitely intent. It's so many things. Another thing that went on, I'm just going. <laughs> do y'all know how long they interviewed uh, Joseph Mensa? Mm-mm. Oh, how long was his interview? 47 minutes. What? Detective, they, they interviewed that man for 47 minutes for killing my son. That was it. Wow. 47 minutes. So what they expect to get get in 47 minutes? What Detective Day and Joseph, Detective Day, the Milwaukee Detective Day, he was basically letting them say and do it. He let him ride. He let him. He, he really didn't say or question that man for nothing. He was really letting him talk and say what he wanted to say and really agreeing with him mm-hmm. through that 47 minutes. But that's it. They didn't come to my house, take no pictures, or, you know, just what they supposed to do. They just 47 minutes, you know what I'm saying, interviewed him, and that was it. And I think it's t- telling because I remember in the first, the first hearing, um, when Baby J's friend was sharing that, like, no one ever questioned him. No. Nobody ever interviewed him. And he was one of the last. He was actually the last person yeah, the last to be person. with Baby J that night. And so to not even interview him and then not even have an hour, two hour long conversation interview with the officer just shows that it's a lot of ex- they were trying to expo- not expose. They were trying to cover up. Mm-hmm. They was trying to cover up and. My son wasn't a felon, so they couldn't, you know what I'm saying? They really didn't have nothing on him, but they was just trying to cover it up. They didn't have nothing on him. And, and, and <laughs> it, it, it's just, it's amazing that they they covered it up. That's what they did. It sounds like we finna rally on May 4th. Oh, yeah. We That's need what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. It's so many, it's just so much out, y'all, that Kim and Justin brought out to how crooked the H. Chisholm Chief Weber, the city attorney of uh, of Wauwatosa, Mary McBride, he didn't show up to the thing the last week. I mean, they look at this as a joke to me, but, you know, they just just think we're nothing. I don't like that. Definitely. I, I think it's a lot that they just, it's, Shani, you're right. You, the key word you're saying is heartbreaking. It's a lot of comments, questions coming in. Uh, Tell them, bring it on. So we can, so I think we should, we should, Click over here so we can get yes, some of these comments and questions put in. Um, so um, Rebecca Burrell had asked, uh, how did you feel after the uh, Chauvin uh, verdict? I whistled like I was at a concert. I clapped and I screamed. <laughs> y'all. I really did. I know my she grandkids are there. I was whistling and I was up in the air. Wow. Because I really, on that case right there, I know they had three cases on them. I thought they was gonna just do one, yeah. but they came out with all three. Yeah. So I, I was, I was <laughs> like, I was at a concert, y'all. I was very happy. But then after that, look, look, look what's going on now. Yeah. You know, look what's going on now. You got them still killing us out here. Yeah. That's the unfortunate piece that is 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 happening. Um, I mean, we were all together and talking about this last week and talking about how we were um reacting to it that we were it was gratification but you know work still continues um to be able to get accountability and and justice for everyone else yeah and um moving forward with jay's cases kim looking to do um any reopening of the other cases yeah, I, I really, I don't know. I ain't going to say that, but I'm quite sure she's going to try, you know. With the, uh, 
I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not going to say that. I, don't, I really don't know that. Jay's case is similar to... Uh, I say that just because I feel like Jay's case is similar to uh, Dontre Hamilton. Dontre Hamilton and, and Alvin Cole. And I really don't know, but I, I'm hoping she do. Because Dontre was sleeping in the park just as well yeah. as Jay. Mm-hmm. And another thing I found out about I was talking, and I didn't know that young man had got his thumb blew off. Yeah. And then they put it back together. He had no thumb, but... It, when they bearded him, he had a thumb on his hand. So, yeah. 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 Marie Hamilton, they're, they're, all of them, they've been with us. All of Marie. Shout out to Mama son. Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Marie, Nate, mm-hmm. and the other, Damien. Damien. Yeah. Still friend of mine. Make sure y'all pay attention. This Friday is Dantre Day. Uh, so, Mama Hamilton, uh, TPR, Marquesa Tucker, uh, Camilla, a lot of every, it's everybody, the communities are coming together this Friday to honor um, and just keep Dontre's name alive. So it's a Facebook page that's been created for it. Uh, so make sure you guys check that out and make sure you guys come and support the Hamilton family um, on Friday as they continue to keep uh, the name of Dontre and Hamilton alive. That's definitely. Um, is there anything you want to share about uh, Jay's daughter that you see, uh, you know, a lot of him? Oh my Look at you smiling. <laughs> oh my God, that's my son. That, that's how I get to see my. Son. She's a woman. She's a young lady, but yeah. that's my son all mm-hmm. day. Built like her. I mean, she built like her dad. Mm-hmm. The arms, the neck, the back. That's my son. So that came out. You know, I'm. I'm, I'm thankful he had a daughter. So mm-hmm. that, how old is she? She's six now. Okay, that's him all day. Mm-hmm. Baby J all day. So. Mm-hmm. And do you guys share pictures and all those things with her? Just, oh, yeah. Okay. She knows. She, she, know. she remembers. She, my dad, that's what she talked about, my daddy. You know, wow. My daddy got killed by she. She, mm-hmm. she knows all this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I want her to be another. I want her to be her own self, but I want her to be a lawyer. I really do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. Another Kim. Straight up. <laughs> Go get him. Straight up. The Kim part two. Yes. That's what I want her to be, a lawyer, whatever she chooses. But that's what I really want her to be. Uh, Pierre, what's the people saying in the in the comments? I'm trying to catch up. It's a lot of questions in here. Bring it. Let's. Cause I'll be talking too fast. So somebody said Tulsa was uh, tampering with evidence, right. and they were conducting their own investigation, which is a violation of Wisconsin law. They need to be held accountable uh, for the law they broke and killing, but and the killing of uh, Baby J. Yes, I, I, that one was on. That was. Uh, uh, I remember seeing. I can't remember. I know it was a detective. From Milwaukee, talking to somebody from Wauwatosa. This was done in, 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 in 2016, so they was justifying it back then. Mm-hmm. Right. Really they was. Right. And the thing about that, Chisholm, we was in a – did you come in the office with us? You I was there. there. He was in there. The man didn't know if the back window was down or he didn't know nothing. Mm-hmm. Chisholm didn't know, was the back window down? Really? They was talking about us having three different lawyers. So – you know, so what we, Ken Laverne, you, you guys can have three. Mm-hmm. See, the thing about this, they get you because you never know this going, you know, you always see it on the news mm-hmm. about a, a cop killing this. But when they come to your front door, it's a totally different. Totally different. Story. That's right. And all that. Yeah. You, and then, and, then, and really they played us dumb because we didn't know about, you know, all this that's going on. Yeah, the runaround was. They, the runaround and y'all, we going to get, you know, you know, and, 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 and we going to make sure he get it. and so, This is what they were saying to my wife yeah. before. We on our way up there to march, you know, like, hold on. We going to get things together. And the cop did this and, you know, and come down to it. They do what Chief Weber say. Cover it up. Get him out of here, you know. Just lying. It's like they hope they hope you just forget about it. You know what yeah. I mean? I hope, like, you you just give up on the fight when you right. just say, you know what, well, <laughs> see, they'll, the thing, they'll let it go. See, the thing about it, when they when the, this when it happened, <clears throat> When this happened, when Detective Day and some big old, he was a big old cop. Dude was big. <laughs> yeah. Because I remember I said, because me and Star had been looking for my son. I started calling his phone mm-hmm. and, and just, you know, like me and Star. The night, of the, the, the night of the incident. Yeah, the night. Of the she was calling the police off, the police stations, the hospitals. And mm-hmm. I had saw the news. I He had her mama car. I saw him. I wasn't paying attention like mm-hmm. that. But I'm just looking and walking and look. I got worried. Then I knew something was wrong. And then I heard that doom, doom, doom on the door. And I look mm-hmm. out. I said, it's the police. Yeah. And the man, Detective Day, mm-hmm. come to me, saying Jay Anderson. 
that's me. I'm, I'm Jay Anderson. See, I'm like, I'm Jay Anderson. What you, what's going on? Exactly. I don't do no crimes or nothing. I'm like, what's going on? Then I looked at him again. I started looking at his face. Jay Anderson, you talking about my son, man? That's how I looked at him. Mm-hmm. I said, man, tell me my son ain't dead. Unfortunately, Mr. Anderson, your son got into altercation with an officer, and he's he's deceased. And then they had to bring this. He brought his phone out. He brought his phone out. And then my son laying dead like this with a 40 glot hole, a 40 glot hole right there in his face, dead. That's how I identify my son. They didn't Bullshit. even allow you to go to the medical examiner's no, office? No, they, 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 they was messing around somewhere like Baby J got shot at 305. I don't think he went to freighter to 4 or something. Yeah. They had him in a lot for an hour. That's bullshit. Everything, they, everything was wrong because he had probably had a, a grand in his pocket, eight nine hundred, eight or nine hundred dollars Yeah. They came to my house worrying about, okay, he had a, some marijuana, which kid don't, you know. Did he sell? No. My yes. son works. Yes. It's more than hustling, just selling drugs. You can hustle with two, three, four jobs. Exactly. You know? yeah. It's different ways of hustling. And like his dad, I don't keep no money on me like that. I always used to tell him, man, don't keep that money. Put that money in the bank, man. Don't keep that money mm-hmm. on you. Mm-hmm. And that's what they was worried about when they took car in the star and was questioning her. He had a lot of money on him. Did he sell weed? Did he? No, he worked just like you, man. Exactly. Like to keep money on him. Like exactly. every young fella. Like to have knots on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's being real. Wait, every right. and, and, and yeah. even women sometimes we like to have yeah. a little money in our purse they too. Always tell man, I used to see him on the Facebook. Man, dude, why are you short? Man, don't put that money on. Yeah. Now, you know we we had we had a hard days a week. We could bring in some money in a week working well, hard. You do know? you know if they even tried to if if there was even try to attempt to revive him to perform CPR? That one cop who's not, I think he, you know, a lot of, I'm finding out a lot of, about three, four, five, six cops ain't in Wabatosa no more. That one cop who checked his post and had the gun, he, mm-hmm. he's not there no more. It's wow. Like, these uh, Wabatosa officers ain't there no more, I'm finding out. Pretty sure they weren't fired. They were, no, they, they, they Nor they with Weber, he doesn't they, fire they, anybody. Yeah. But yeah. 10 of them, I think nine or 10 of them is not there anymore. I know the guy that was, with Baby J, you know what I'm saying, on that day, he ain't there no more. Mm-hmm. As we as we look as we look at it, they're just they they're leaving. They're leaving Wabatosa. I think they only got ninety officers now, so Yeah, ninety one. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm on it. <laughs> so I'm on it. Um but definitely, I mean I I think, you know, this is exposing what needs to happen as it relates to police. So I think it was a question that was in the chat, you know, outside of, you know, what's happening with the John Doe hearing and you wanting to have the park, what are some other type of reforms or policies that you want to see enacted within um, not just the city of Wauwatosa Police Department, but in police departments across the across the country? Um, me? Mm-hmm. Personally, like, I, what's that other law we got, that Daniel Bell law? Yeah. I mean, the guy, that law, I, I like it, but when you really go through an a officer and involved shooting with your kids, like these eight, nine months we had to wait, I didn't like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that at all. And you got these other laws, if you try to file a suit or whatever, and it's the heir have to find it. You know, I, I love Star and Baby J, but they wasn't married, but uh, she had to do everything, and at the time, and I didn't understand it, but we had Saffron as a lawyer. Mm-hmm. But I called Saffron three or four weeks straight, y'all. This man, rest in peace, but the man did not call me or answer my... He wouldn't do nothing, wouldn't call me back for a month. I'm like, I want to know what was going on with my son's case. Yeah. yeah. But I, this man wouldn't call me back, you know? I feel like we was destined to meet, though. Yeah. Because, um, I don't know, you know, uh, Kendra... Anderson, uh, NATO. That's them, my cousin. Yeah, them. That's family. Them, the twins. Yeah. Them so, twins. so um, NATO and them had came home and they had Jay's shirt on, you know. And then they was like, uh, everybody was like, you know, justice for Jay, justice for Jay. Mm-hmm. I was just like, you know, what is that about or whatever? And they was telling me, and I was like, man, that's messed up, man. So yeah, I must definitely like when he told me though, like I had went to a family function, mm-hmm. and I think we met then. And I was just mm-hmm. like, man. You know. See, I know them Andersons. A lot of you Andersons, man. Yeah. Sure is. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of Andersons, but 
Yeah. Yeah, but that's 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 what's going on with Wild Tulsa, y'all. And then uh what else was it? Uh, I wanted to say. Yeah, so um and then um uh, Seville's birthday. We had just found out that uh, Jay and Seville are bur- buried in the same uh, cemetery. That day, you guys was just me and Linda. We, I'm all you know. We we we, we protest. I'm all like yep. sunroof. I got like all like out the there, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was raining all that. We was out that day, but we rolled up on. We what we go about Burlight, didn't we? Yeah, mm. we made that mm-hmm. left on twenty. She's like, that's gonna be that's that's the, that's the uh, grave right there. I said. I don't think that's the grave, baby. Uh-huh. And then we got to ride, and y'all, we got to ride. We talking, mm-hmm. protesting, Seville Smith, mm-hmm. you know, and you know, such and such other. And we got by Green Bay, y'all. And you knew it. Me and my wife got completely silent. Mm. We didn't know it, but we knew. My, I can go see Baby J. It's hard for my wife to do it. Yeah. And she, she, I breaks down, but mm-hmm. she break. It, it's really hard on her. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And then we walking and we walking and we. I'm like, okay. Where's the feel that? And I'm like, I'm holding, I'm crying, I'm, I'm tearing up. Mm. I let Sedan, because it's, it's, it's Seville Day. So right. after Sedan get done, he got a big bottle of liquor. <laughs> you got to drink liquor. What kind of liquor was it? It was Remy Mark. Remy Mark. And uh, after he got done, I said, Sedan, can you pour some liquor on my son? Crazy. Look, I know he looked at me crazy, like this cat crazy. I said, yeah, where he at? I said over there, and he's like, "Say no more." And that's that. Pi- that's why I wanted that picture with me, you, and Linda up there because that was just a heartbreaking day. Mm. You know, yeah. that was a good day mm-hmm. and a good day, but we didn't know that to yeah. be right mm-hmm. from each other, and that mm-hmm. was just very. That was a that was that was heartbreaking. That was beautiful. Was a good day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the movement. That's the yeah, way it's created. You know. Uh, Shout we, out to the movement, y'all. Yeah. Definitely for yeah. connecting people. And connecting all of us together. The um, revolution. That's right. You know, got us where we at. That's right. We transpired, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I love the fact that, uh, you know, uh, Linda and Jay, they've been out there with us um, just every step of the way. Uh, they got their signs and they got their fist up and they out there just marching. They've been marching with us in the rain, in the cold, yeah. and when it's hot. Um, and just being just being out there and, and exposing themselves and, and and making sure that obviously the name of Jay is out there, but also contributing and supporting the other families because yeah. you know everybody is in this not wanting to be willingly fraternity together um, of bonded families who've been impacted by this. So I think the more that you all are leaning with each other, it's just beautiful. It is. That's that's that's. I hate we have to be family like this. That's right. But. This family mm-hmm. is family now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Blank, blank, it's it family. Right. right. I mean, one thing. I mean, me and the Coles, we went over to uh, to meet the George Floyd and Breonna Taylor mom. Oh, that's beautiful. That was family. I mean, they our family now because officers killed our siblings and, yeah. and, and our, you know, they killed our folks. Yeah. It's crazy how you find family in this too. It's like the people that uh, you know. For me, I feel like some of the people in my family that should be fighting with me, you know, they not there. So, like, I, I, I meet a dad in the protest, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? I meet a mom in the protest, mm-hmm. you know, a couple of big sisters. Yeah. <laughs> Little brothers. <laughs> what what advice can you give other parents who lost a child to, loss, to law enforcement? That's a good question. That was a question from uh, Rebecca Burrell. Mine is, honestly, you guys, you have to get some counseling. It, 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 it's not easy. This, mm. this is something that will never go away. You have to get counseling, 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 counseling. Yeah. For real. That's it. I mean, you have to get counseling because this, this is something that won't ever go away, and everybody is different because you got you got a lot of people tell, come up to you. They don't know no better. You got to just hold your horse. But, mm-hmm. Jay, it's going to get better. It's going to are you? I want to say if you, I, man, really? You know you can't. You can't <laughs> yeah. say nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Like, hey, man, sure. me to come to find out now, I will never get over this. You got this. Is never go away. Yeah, it's, it's got a little lighter, right? But it was. Mm-hmm. Them, it, it's heavy, you guys. It's very heavy. Yeah. It'll never go away. That's you got to learn how to deal with it. That's mm-hmm. what I'm learning to do. Mm-hmm. How to deal with it? Because anything will trigger you off. I can go by Madison Park. I can go by. A song, Georgie Porgy, that it bust me out crying. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lloyd, the Lloyd song, I forgot the name of, it, but every time I hear that Lloyd song, I breaks down. Mm-hmm. 
you know, true is called. But oh, yep. It remind me of Baby J all day with that dress and, you know, mm-hmm. it just it breaks me down. A lot of things break me down. Would you also encourage families to to just to continue in the fight, like to be consistent? Yeah. That, that, that will make you feel a lot better than mm-hmm. just, you know, you out here fighting. It, that, 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 that lifts you up. That mm-hmm. lifts, yeah. that lifts mm-hmm. you up. Honestly, fighting mm-hmm. for justice and for rights. That that lifts you up. Because this happened in 2016. 2016 and we're in 2021 and you're just now mm-hmm. getting this hearing. So yeah. definitely what you would encourage families to just hang in there, continue oh, yeah. with the fight and yeah. get, a, get, a, get a Kim. Yeah. Get a Kim because <laughs> at the time... We were able to fight because in 2016, I think Scott Walker had changed that law to where it was, it was six years, but he cut it down to three years. So he wouldn't be able to do this if it wasn't for that old, you know, that law. So we had one more year to fight because they give you six years to fight, I think mm-hmm. it is. So, so Dan, you've been real, um, like, r- real pushing the, the, the need for ending qualified immunity. Um, so talk to us even just as it relates to that and how that even connects back to um, Mr. Anderson in his fight for Jay. Uh, well, my thing was um, after meeting all of the families, even though I was fighting for Seville, after meeting all the families, I thought about what is it that could help us all, you know, um, as of right now in this time, you know, and I mean uh, help us the most, you know, where we can see some justice. And that's where um, ending the qualified immunity was uh, just, you know, it was just, it was a home run. As soon as I thought about it, I was like, yeah, that'll work for every family. And then that work for, uh, you know, future incidents as well. You know, if the police can be held accountable, if we can break the barriers of the uh, level where we negotiate these contracts with the unions and just have it in written policy that, you know, right is right and wrong is wrong. You know, we wouldn't be going through the fight that we have to go through. You know, we would easily be able to say that, well, you know, they don't have qualified immunity, so why are they not brought up on charges at That's least right. to start with? Mm-hmm. So that was something that just, you know, like I said, after after meeting so many families, it was just like, you know, I'm not I'm not just thinking for Seville. You know, right. I'm thinking I don't want to see another Seville. Respect. Right. You know, Respect. yeah, I met Jay right. Anderson, but I don't want to meet another Jay Anderson. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I met Alvin Cole's sisters and, you know, family, but I didn't want to meet another Alvin Cole's family. Mm-hmm. So it's just like, you know, what what can help us all, you know? And, of course, uh, the uh, Rally for Justice brought out a lot of people from, um, you know, uh, different area codes, different cities, different states that, you know, are going through the same, you know, uh, tragedy. And a lot of their stories, you would never think, like, okay, you know, yeah, that happened to Seville, but what happened to Seville didn't happen to Jay. You know, but what happened to Jay didn't happen to Alvin Cole. You know, you you hear these stories, and as they go around the room and the families are telling the stories, you find out that, you know, there was a Seville Smith, you know, over in New York, you know. There was a Jay Anderson over in, you know, Kansas. You know, like, it was just everywhere. Mm-hmm. And it was just like, damn. We all, you know, we we are really in this fight, yes. you know, because of what the police have done. And even though, you know, uh, nobody's story, you know, is more important than the next, it just was uh, something that I felt like, you know, I could contribute to every family. Yeah. You know, uh, I got my brothers back, you know, since the day he died. I got my dad's back, my, my mom, no matter if you family, I got your back. Respect. So my contribution to my family that I met in the movement was to just add that. You know, and I, that's what I came with. Yeah. And I want to say shout out again to Sedan Smith, man, because uh, I I think it's important that y'all be out here. Um, yes. It's so e- you could easily be sitting at home dealing with it and mm-hmm. just just being stagnant. You know what I mean? Instead yeah. of actually being out here making a change. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, yep. and, and seeing it through. You know what I mean? And not waiting on somebody else to get it done for you. You know what I mean? Being a part yeah. of the process. It, it feels greater once once you get to that point. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I just want to shout y'all out. Right. Thanks, thanks, Pierre. Because when we, uh, because when we, remember we went to uh, the White House, 
I mean, not the White House, but the Capitol up there, Madison. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, damn, man, you killed that speech up there, bro. You did it. Did you remember that? <laughs> yes. And somebody else that really did, 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 that got me that day was, uh, Al, what's her, uh, her son just died? I can't, I'm having a hard pronouncing the name. Aviolos. Oh, uh, Acevedo. Joel Acevedo. Yes, yeah, his wife. Oh, she went off. I, mm-hmm. I loved her dad, mm-hmm. so. So I, I can I ask y'all something? Yeah. Please. One thing uh, I don't like. I, I was I was I was talking about the Daniel Bell law, but I I got through off. Mm-hmm. But with that, they had you waiting, and then you you got things up in Madison. You waiting eight nine months, and mm-hmm. you don't know what's happening. But I'm looking now at the FPC, right? Mm-hmm. I'm seeing how they we we looking for us a new chief. Mm-hmm. Morales trying to get back. You can't come back, bro. No. Um, but I see how the FPC took, you know, the Common Council and just did it on their own. You know, they took it, you know. And me, as I've been going through this, I, I would like for the FPC to really, when a cop shoot, how do y'all feel about the FPC taking over when, when a cop kills somebody? Um, instead, of, instead of we having to go to Madison and wait eight, nine months and... You know, just that, that's very heartbreaking. What do you I think feel about? like uh, if we put it in their hands, we'll still go through the same process. Just yeah. to be honest, uh, I don't see things moving, f- you know, very vastly when they when they you know get in uh, when when they get it in writing, they still don't push the agenda forward, you know. And then when it's brought to them uh, vocally, you know, right in their face, they still don't push the agenda forward. Mm-hmm. They have all these ways of saying. Well, this is what we have to go through first. Right. Mm -hmm. I think when we break down the structure of the uh, political background, for it to work for us, we have to cut the corners of any stipulation because we don't read the fine print. Mm -hmm. As a people, we don't read, you know, the the little fine print. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And they expect us not to. And they do do expect us not to. But this is something that we are receiving information as it being, you know, Something that we can we can use, but we we don't we don't necessarily understand the in between guidelines of things, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that's the way that the the government is keeping it you know political yeah. you know um, everybody's not in the politics exactly so for our people to understand it or get it in my eyes I feel like you know just to cut the corner let's just say what's right is right what's wrong is wrong and let's start with charges. And yeah. we'll go from there. There you go. Yeah. You know, any appeals that the state might have, you know, let's just have it be backed up with fact that our impress, our, our investigation on its own or our uh, presumption of what was right and what was wrong out the gate, which brought them up on charges, until that's proven, um, you know, ineffective, then I think that's the only way we can go with this. I feel like, you know, we need to have that as not a boundary that we set, but a standard to where it's just like, you know, no, we're not negotiating. They're, they're mm-hmm. brought up on charges for a reason. That's right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's you know right. I mean, um, after reviewing certain body cameras, if you have to launch an investigation to say why your officer should not be, you know, held accountable, just in the manner of uh, the time that it takes for you doing the investigation, they should be brought up on charges mm-hmm. just while you're figuring out why they're not guilty you know before a court of law give the people the right that they deserve to where a criminal act has been performed whether it's by a uh, uh, authority figure or not you know go with the following proceedings of where you know somebody was killed this person's the killer you know uh this person's the victim let's charge the you know let's charge the killer and that's how I see it. I think to even add on to that, you know, I work in government, so I deal with due process all the time and things having to go in a certain order. And I can recall, like, just even starting in government, I didn't know all the nuances of it. And so I had to learn. And so I had to read. I had to do my research. I had to talk to people to figure out, like, what's going on. But then when I really got, in, like, involved in it, and I think it was probably just a shift of recognizing just it's a lot of stuff wrong Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and granted people are human so people are prone to make mistakes and people are prone prone to see things not they're not going to see things the way that i see them however the bigger picture here is that when there is a shooting and there's been multiple shootings multiple on top of multiple shootings and they have a lot of them have not been 
given the due justice or due process that they deserved right. mm-hmm. because you've had people who work in alignment with each other. And let's just be honest mm-hmm. yes. that people don't like to have things be transparent. And so I think to while we have these FPCs or these PFCs in these communities um, and they are not being paid, they are appointed uh, positions. And so they have to follow uh, what is at the best interest of the community and most importantly what's at the best interest of that victim mm-hmm. and the people who have been impacted by that not at the best interest of the police department and I think a lot of times it's because they are nervous or scared or for what's going to happen behind it from police unions or any other uh, um, lawsuits that may come upon the city however it has been proven that the way that we can have policing done these days doesn't work and there needs to be a serious reform. You having to wait eight to nine months to get information, to get things released, is a, is just horrible. It's degrading it um, when you want to know that information in real time and right then and there. And not to have to wait eight to nine or even a year or even beyond that to find out what happened with your family member. And I just I throw it back at people all the time is, what if that was your son? Mm-hmm. What if that was your daughter? What if that was your husband, your wife? You would want to wait. You would mm-hmm. want that information to be out there now. So I think when you when you put take it out of those hands and put it back into we just need to, the charges need to be there. Mm-hmm. And whatever else has to come behind that comes behind that. Um, but I think, you know, we live in Wisconsin is a police state. We live in this country where where things have not been on the right side for us. But I believe in a day of reckoning. And so I'm glad you asked that question uh, because they don't expect for us to be prepared. They don't expect for us to be aware. That's how May 6th. Milwaukee FPC is getting ready to to vote on whether they're going to ban chokeholds uh, for the Milwaukee Police Department. And the people are going to show up. The people are going to hold them accountable and and make sure that they demand for that to happen. But these things haven't been happening for quite some time, especially in Wauwatosa. That hasn't been happening for quite some time when you have people coming out and really knowing what's going on with policy. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, I think it shouldn't. I'm just going to say if the people (laughs) give the people what they want Mm -hmm. we we, we essentially control everything Mm -hmm. I don't know where it's been taken taken away from us where where we feel we don't have any control but I feel like right now everyone it's time to get back in light Mm -hmm. Um, let's, let's control let's set the tempo you know what I mean? And once, since we got the tempo, don't lose motivation. That's right. That's we can't right. lose motivation at all. That's right. Because the moment you slip is the moment we begin to go back. That's yeah. right. And we we, we, we got to go any way but backwards. Yeah. Any way but backwards. Um, yep, and let's uh, tune into our viewers. Mm-hmm. Um, Kevin, who's a well-known journalist, he asked, uh, you know, what is it that he can do as a journalist to help the family out the most? Put that crook out there in the paint. <laughs> <laughs> you heard that, Kevin? <laughs> Whenever you're crooked and you're doing a crime or whatever, you need to be put out there. He just, we need to put out there that that man got a serious problem, y'all. He don't need to be no sheriff, officer, whatever. He got that PSD. Yeah. He on medicine. Something is wrong. Yeah. He's going to kill again. Period. Mm-hmm. Me and my wife, I should have brought it. We wrote something f- five years ago. Everything we said before he kills again, it came true. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, shout out to all the, the, the media that's been on the right side of these yeah. issues that have really been trying to the do right a side. lot of yeah. exposure. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, I, definitely thanks to Isaiah. Isaiah was on season two of Revolution Ready, um, and he's been doing a lot of great work in getting, getting exposing what's been happening, um, not just with Wauwatosa, but as it relates to policing. So I think that's really key. Isaiah, Isaiah. Isaiah Holmes. Yeah. Little mm-hmm. kid, this this how this happened, you guys. Little kid, we marching, we marching. Me and Madison Park, we marching. <laughs> Little kid walk up to me, hey, I'm such and such. I'm like, yeah, man, come on. But after I met that little kid, that man Isaiah's been down. He didn't got work from 16 where he was getting, he was getting everything. Mm-hmm. 
just just doing a lot. They would stop him. I took him down there to talk to Saffron. Saffron looked at us like we was crazy. Mm-hmm. This man had all this information. But you know what? Kim came along. Mm-hmm. Game changer. Man. Game changer. All came, uh, helped him. Everything came out and helped. So everything he had and it helped Kim out a lot. So the young man knew a lot about Walter right. Tosa because he grew up there. So That's right. Yeah, he's been doing a good job in being able oh, yeah. uh, to get that out. Uh, make sure if y'all haven't already to share this, like this. We are hit, sitting here having a great conversation with Mr. Jay Anderson Sr. talking about uh, Jay Anderson Jr. and basically all things that needs to happen uh, as it relates to police reform. And, and we sending up good vibes yeah. for that John Doe hearing. May 4th, May 4th, May 4th. May 4th, 4th. 9 o'clock. Make sure that y'all tune in. It'll be uh, a Zoom link that you can be able to view it and be able to support them. So tell us how can we continue to support you as a whole? I mean, should we rally? I, 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 yeah. I mean, well, well, we don't be in court. <laughs> yeah, not in the court. I noticed the last, you know what, you guys, the last time we was in court, the first time we didn't have that many sheriffs, but the second time I noticed a lot of sheriffs out because Chief mm-hmm. Weber was coming Chief in. Weber, mm-hmm. yeah. It was a lot of sheriffs there. So, yeah, but... The, the more is the mirror, you guys. Just show the support, you know. Yeah. Let the judge know, hey, we out here do need to go to the penitentiary because he, he committed a crime. And we need to support, honestly. So what do you think about even some of the things, that's, these new cases that are coming out? Now this is the man, Andrew Brown, uh, who was shot and killed by the police in uh, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Um We've been following that story. It yes. even connect you know similar my, to yours. Similar to my son. Mm-hmm. They shot that man four times. In mm-hmm. the, I mean, three or four in the uh, hand and one in the back of the neck. And, and, and people saw that. The man had his hand. They killed the young. They killed him. Mm-hmm. Murdered mm-hmm. that man. And now, what, a, seven of them and they resigned? Or yeah. Was, yeah. Well, I think it was like four resigned. Um, one resigned and two mm-hmm. retired and yeah. seven on, on uh, administrative leave. Goes so. back to the... Qualified immunity. Mm-hmm. That if we had that federally as well as in every state, um, you know they wouldn't be able to do that. They would have to have a day of accountability. Yeah, these cops are just getting like that. That seventy-three year old. I know she's a white lady, but she's she's seventy-three years old, and them cops broke her arm. And why? Y'all see her that? Y'all see that? No. Uh, yeah, they picked her. She was in Walmart. She's like, I was going to yeah, pay for it. And they slammed mm-hmm. the lady, broke her arm, and then they pull it up. had in the cell, was sitting there talking, just joking about it. Mm-hmm. And they broke this lady's arm. Everything, that other case in North Carolina, that's just like Baby J case to me. They just, they just gunned that man down. They, they definitely did. And then even today, the judge is saying he's going to del- – Kind of like half a half delay the 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 release of the body cam footage after a certain period of time, uh, but the family in the city is just really saying no. We need the we need that evidence right now. Right, and see, I, I've been through that, been yeah. that, did there. They gon' they gon' they not gonna put it out to like when they justified Baby J case and that one detective, one black guy said, please put the tape out. Like I wanted that tape out. Now that's I said, put that tape out. Mm-hmm. I don't want to want that tape out, mm-hmm. you know. Because when we first went and saw it, we had a lawyer out of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Me, Star, and my sister Jackie went in there. Mm-hmm. They wouldn't let our lawyer in there. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know. We, mm-hmm. didn't know. we didn't know no better then. A lawyer was supposed to have been in there with us, but right. they didn't let dude go in. And then we couldn't really, when we saw dude, really, on the real, y'all, when I first saw it, the light was so bright, I really thought the officer was white. Mm-hmm. I thought I didn't know he was black until, and a couple fellas, <laughs> King Rick came to my house. He's like, "Nah, Jay, he black." I said, "Nah, man, he white." I saw him, he white. Mm-hmm. That man looked at me. He's like, "Dude, you crazy?" I, mm-hmm. I thought it, the light was so bright. He was shooting. I thought he was white. Right. When I really got down to it, Star got that picture. He was black. Yeah. Even talk about that. Like, what y'all think of just even even the fact of people even being critical. Of the, of the fact of saying if we, you know, believe in black lives, why are we not in support or why are we going so hard about Mensa and he, he, was Af- he is African American. Oh, skin folk and kin folk. You hear me? Right is right and wrong is wrong we no matter what. realize good. Joseph Mensa is not from the United States. He's from Ghana. He ain't grew up in the hood and been through what we've been through growing up for real, y'all. 
He ain't, I mean, when he he went to school in Wauwatosa, but he uh, he wasn't born here. He's not from Milwaukee. He's not from the United States. So, so he, he just not- adds to the fact that he shouldn't be wearing a badge. Not saying that people from foreign countries can't come here and you know be I mean, you I, know I, police I officers, but I'm just saying it adds to the fact that you know coming from a troubled place, you know he's probably not the best candidate. No, mm-hmm. he isn't. Yeah, and then certainly not being the a best candidate now to even be at another you know another department after you know what he's done. Right. Do you think that they look at him look at him as a token officer, Pierre? Uh, yeah. Most definitely. Yeah, I mean, it, uh, as we like to say, he's the send off. He's the send off because you had who was that judge? Who should be our attorney general? Judge, judge Sim, what's his name? Seifert. Uh, uh-uh, not Seifert. I'm talking about uh, he used to be our attorney general for the Wisconsin. Oh. Uh, Brad Schimmel. Brad Schimmel. Mm-hmm. He's a judge now in Waukesha. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, y'all. You know, he wrote the chief, chief, the chief, and told him, "Good job. You got guts. You did a good job by hiring Joseph Mensa." So th- that's why I say, y'all, it's it's starting from the. Top. Mm-hmm. I mean, from these judges, we got to break it. Chief Weber, Chisholm, systematic racism. Cl- what, what, mm-hmm. what, what are they? It's a clan. That's the clan. Yeah. They just changing roles, not mindsets. That, there you That's go. it. Exactly. Do you think? Do you do you think that there is an opportunity to like change that? Because I mean, while we say that it's wrong, like, what do we do to right that wrong? Like, how do we how do we change that? I feel like we need to get people that are directly connected to the community and to these areas. Mm -hmm. That's just like you got police that respond to certain areas in the hood that they've never been to. They don't drive down these streets. They don't go around these places. So Mm -hmm. when they show up, it is a foreign country to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. And then the stories that they hear coming behind those hood places. Yeah. So they treat it as such. Oh, no, it's just a bunch of gang bangers, a bunch of people slanging drugs, uh, you know, crackheads, prostitutes. You know, that's basically what this community is. Let's just, you know, rough, it, rough them up a little bit. You know, see if we can get a couple of them off the corner. <laughs> but if you look at it, <clears throat> you go in here. Mexican, Puerto Rican, you got all, you got all of them in every nationality. I yeah. mean, you got crackheads. I mean, all that prostitution on the side, going to South Side on Surge Street. You can buy you a woman, but it's just a mess everywhere, you know? Yeah, yeah. Like Donnie Hathaway said, the world is a ghetto, you guys, on real, to me. Most definitely said that. And I think when, you know, you guys are saying that that was brought up in, in the John Doe hearing um, of Kim Sharon, that this is what the officers were thinking about Baby J mm-hmm. when, they, when they saw that he had cash on him and they're asking um, his daughter's mom at the time, like, you know, Asking her questions to probably get her confused or to get her angry and thinking that, you know, was he a criminal and all of those things. And I, and I wonder, like, why is that always the mindset when it comes to yes. black and brown men um, that, we you know, black and brown men are criminals. And it's because they have this on them. They have that on them like that. That mindset has to change. And I think part of that has to be that we have to be that change. We yeah. have to get us in office. Yeah. Um, so that we understand background, we know, we understand the mindset of us, and we under, we've been there, we've lived yeah. these things, yeah. and getting us in office so we can break down these uh, this the system of oppression, systematic racism. Systematic. Yeah. I love that. Say it again. Systematic racism. We had to get rid of that. And that's funny that you said that. I actually had a conversation with a young man the other day. Um, he had came into the building. And he was dressed up. He had a, a nice sh- dress shirt on and a tie, nice slacks on. And the response he got from everybody that came across him was either, are oh, you going to court? Mm-hmm. Oh, you must be going to Fruno. Are you going to a hospital? Somebody die? Or are you going to church? And I said, why, why can't he just be dressing exactly. to dress good? He feel good. He want right. to dress for success. Whatever the situation may be, why can't, why are we automatically just go there? We, when you see a black man dressed up, oh, he, he going to court. Yeah. He going to see his PO officer. Yeah. You know what I mean, and and I just thought that was funny that you said that. Like we do, we just got to change our mindset. You know what I mean? We, it starts with us. Yeah. Exactly. Because I was, I, what was I at? I was at my dad and them funeral. My dad and my brother we had a funeral, but I had a cousin that was joking with me. Right? He was like, "Man, you look like a pimp," because <laughs> I I was dressed up like, mm-hmm. "Man, I ain't no pimp. I'm married, dude. I'm not trying to be no pimp." 
pimp. Exactly. Like slavery, I don't do that. So you know. And it shouldn't be conditioned into our our minds that we can only dress that way if we're going to those certain mm-hmm. type of events. Like or that's if you're pimping. Yeah, let's normalize let's, just being yeah. able to look Come good sometimes. Like it's okay. Black people look good when we put on when men put on the, I love to see that's a black man in the suit. I think we dress it up next week. Next week. That's <laughs> it. I, I think they want to see it. Come on, y'all. Yeah. yeah. They want to yeah. see it. I love it. See with my wife, she she work at a bank, so she has to be dressed. Yeah. And me, I'm I'm her I'm 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 nasty and greasy, so when this time get go or do something, I'm getting cut up. That's right. Yeah. She's like, yeah. <laughs> like, dude, I be dressed all week. I don't want to get dressed. Jeans and that's it. Like, yeah. But you know. Yeah. But yeah. she's dressed up all the time. But that shouldn't be, again, it shouldn't be, you shouldn't be looked at because you don't dress up right. as a criminal or something that it, that you don't want a person that you don't want to be around. Um, because I think that just sends off the wrong message. And I think yeah. as we are, you know, you're raising a young daughter, you're raising uh, five kids, and you're you raising a granddaughter, and being able to have them understand and know when you go out in this world, you don't have to look good just to be treated good. Mm-hmm. You should be treated good based upon who you are yes. um, and, and, and not be not be seen as a threat. Yes, yes. I saw that happen one time. A well, guy with his Lexus, he, was, he just had on some work clothes. Yeah. But the man is well off. Right. It's just the way that work that that working Lexus treated him. He went to the other one out in uh, Brookfield or wherever that is mm-hmm. on Blue Mound. Mm-hmm. They got rid of the dude right there on um, Silver Spring, and he got him. They gave him a good deal on the Lexus. Yeah, so yeah. They found the man. He worked. He got his own business. He got money. So yeah, don't treat him like that because he dressed like that. So yeah. So if Pierre is today dressing up next Wednesday, that means I got to dress that up. That definitely today. means you got to dress like, up. I, 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 I got to represent for the ladies. Yeah, we all show out. I love I, it. I had a quick uh, question. Uh, I know you said uh, when we we're talking about supporting you um, and financially. I know you got lawyer fees and all that. Yeah. So how how can um, we support you in that manner? Right. Well, right. my wife she sell beads, bracelet, bracelets, mm-hmm. and lasagna, mm-hmm. but. The lasagna, that, that takes a long time. That was good though. Yeah, it was good, but he's been doing it. We've been able to get Kim. How up. much are the How much are the beads? Beads are five bucks. Okay, with your name, but but that's been helping us out big time. I mean, we own our house. We got bills, y'all. And yeah, got to, and these ain't yeah. no regular beads. These designer beads. Designer these beads. came from you and, know what I'm uh, saying. Kim the, is the, we, the we give them movement we itself. Yeah, we right. make it. We make a thousand. We gonna get it to Kim. Yeah. Exactly. Whatever we make, we give yeah. it to you. Kim. So how so. can people get um they revolution beads? How can people get connected to you or Miss Linda to be able to get um one of the beads? Cause she can make them however you want them, y'all. Um, and, and she she deliver them, and you come pick them up. Either way, is put there in a cash enough app? pre-orders of that for that lasagna, we might get lucky. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a cash app, and that's me. I don't know. I don't be knowing the cash app. Her and my daughter know it, but well, we'll we'll get the cash app we'll information out to the people, so that way people can be able to support y'all. Well, Mr. Anderson and Mrs. Anderson both are on Facebook, so you can most definitely follow them or send them a direct message. Yeah, Linda, put it in there now. I see you watching. Shout out to Miss Miss Mrs. Anderson. She, Mama Anderson, hey. she shout watching. Out, shout out. Y'all show her some love. Yeah, she says oh, yep, we have a go go. Fund It's right there. So if y'all see it in the go. comments. Yeah. Attorney fund. Yep. Yeah. So it's definitely important to be able to support um, the legal portion of this, um, so that way they can yeah. continue their fight, their effort. Because it might, it will continue after this, oh, yeah. um, after May fourth. So they'll continue to need not just emotional support, but they definitely need the financial support, yeah. uh, so they can keep doing what they're doing and yeah. keep on with that fight. And see, the thing about this, after this, after our case mm-hmm. over, this year didn't brought us out. I mean, we just want to, like, what we going to do? Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they on uh, Holden Center. Let's go, baby. <laughs> that, that's what we doing. Yeah. Yeah. I we love it. Came in, we got us a, a family, and we just love protesting and love fighting. You know, fighting now. That's, Respect. That's what's mm-hmm. Respect. So, we got to keep Jay's happening. name alive. Yeah, that's man. right. That's Jay's right. Jay's and everybody, you know, yeah. everybody. So, yeah. It's going to keep us going. So shout out when y'all see y'all see TPR, you see anybody else, y'all most definitely gonna see uh, the Andersons out there yeah. with they signs. They gonna yeah. be out there with us. Uh, we so we be walking, we be riding. Be <laughs> they be riding in the, in the black jeep. <laughs> Sometimes I walk a half a mile or whatever. Like, half a mile. <laughs> 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 you 
yeah, yeah. You no know, TPO, go. they put in numbers. They put in numbers. Yeah. So once again, y'all see the cash app for the Anderson family. That'll sign justice for Jay Jr. So y'all make sure that y'all uh, go ahead and, and send them some fin- financial love to that cash app. Put your request in for a bracelet. Uh, so that way you can you can go around and you can show your support, uh, not just for the movement, but for t- particularly for uh, Baby J. Yeah. That's definitely. Respect and, for Baby J. And make sure y'all follow the family. You know, show them as much support as y'all can. You know, keep them in y'all prayers. And make sure y'all share, y'all liking the post, you know, uh, from Revolution Ready. You know, I want to give a special shout out to all of our viewers. We would like to say thank y'all. Thank y'all. Thank you. Thank you. You know, this show would not be as successful without y'all. We love y'all. Um, we want to keep on um, encouraging y'all to, you know, stay tuned with the revolution. And y'all know where to get the best news from. I'm Sedan Smith. I missed him. I'm Pierre. And this is Revolution Ready. That's right. Be down there May 4th, you guys. May 4th. May 4th, y'all. Lights. Camera. Black shin. That's right. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks, Thank Mr. You. Anderson, for being Thank here you. today. Thank we appreciate you. you. Love you. Love you all. Love, love you, you all. Pops. Love Show you some all. love. Yeah.